September the 28th is a beautiful day in Brussels. The sun is shining and people are having their lunch outdoors on the esplanade of the European Parliament. Nothing out of the ordinary, except that it's unusually quiet given how many people there are around me as I walk up to the main entrance of the EP's Altiero Spinelli building. September the 28th, 2016 is a special day indeed. Hundreds of deaf people and dozens of sign language interpreters from all over Europe and even Japan have gathered in Brussels for a truly unique event. A conference entitled Multilingualism and Equal Rights in the EU, the Role of Sign Languages. And the location could not be more fitting, as this conference takes place in the iconic and beautiful hemicycle of the European Parliament. Having entered the plenary room or hemicycle, I am stunned. There are over 600 people in this amazing room, almost 40 of them from outside the European Union. This is an absolute atemberaubendes Gefühl, in diesen Raum zu kommen und so viele GebärdensprachdolmetscherInnen zu sehen. Ich habe Gänsehaut gehabt, als ich diesen Raum betreten habe. I'm not stunned by noise. Quite the contrary. The room is almost quiet, apart from the occasional outburst of laughter. Most of the communication is signed. It is certainly not the usual business of this debating chamber, and truly a sight to behold. At first, I can't find a place to sit down. The parliamentarian seats have been divided into blocks for the individual sign languages. In front of every block, there's a sign language interpreter and a second one right beside. They wear black or other dark colors to increase the contrast with their hand's skin tone. And they stand on little podiums, all in the interest of enhancing visibility and understanding by the audience. Okay, dan gaan we nu van start. Ik wil graag iedereen goeiemiddag wensen. En natuurlijk, uiteraard wil ik ook iedereen van harte welkom heten op deze historische conferentie. This is Helga Stevens welcoming the participants of the conference. Actually, the person you hear is her Flemish interpreter, because Helga Stevens uses Flemish sign language. The sheer numbers of this conference are impressive. One huge room, 31 EU sign languages, one non-EU sign language, Japanese, 24 spoken EU languages, including Irish, a hundred and forty-five interpreters and dozens of MEPs. The one MEP behind this historic event is Helga Stevens, who we just heard giving her opening remarks. Stevens is a Belgian politician and an MEP for the New Flemish Alliance, which forms part of the European Conservatives and Reformists group in the Parliament. Stevens' life so far is quite astonishing. She was born deaf in 1968. She first attended a school for the deaf before graduating from a mainstream school as one of the first Belgian pupils benefiting from inclusion education. During a stint in the United States, she got in touch with deaf advocates. Back in Belgium, she studied law and became a lawyer and then studied law again on a Fulbright scholarship at the University of Berkeley. In parallel to her legal career, she started working in advocacy for the deaf, notably with the European Union of the Deaf, and became actively involved in local and national politics. Helga Stevens has been one of the two signing members of the European Parliament since 2014, together with Hungarian MEP and co-organizer of this conference, Adam Kosha. When Helga explained to me that she was going to bring a conference of uh, people with hearing disabilities to the European Parliament, I don't think anybody expected such an impressive turnout. 65 MEPs across all political groups have sponsored over 430 visitors for them to be able to come to Brussels. And it was also members of the European Parliament who supported the provision of international sign language interpretation and speech to text for the live web stream of the event. It is fitting that the European Parliament would host this conference. It has a long history of supporting the cause of the deaf. 
My name is Oliver Poliat, one of MEP Stevens' regular interpreters. British Sign Language, American Sign Language, Hungarian Sign Language, and Flemish Sign Language. These are the sign languages of the members, as well as leaders of European-level NGOs who come to the European Parliament on a regular basis. Today is obviously an exception, and many of you can be proud to represent your sign languages appearing in the EP for the very first time in such large numbers. The reality of the situation has been, and still is, that there is less support for sign languages compared to spoken languages. Deaf people are not linguistically disabled, and therefore their communication accessibility should not fall under that category. Rather, it should fall under the policy of controlled, full multilingualism, just as their spoken language colleagues. Sign and spoken language teams are the future of interpreting in the European Parliament. After decades of resolutions, recognition, and runaround, I think we are finally in a position to make some change. And who better to set the example than the European Parliament? In June 1988, a resolution was approved here unanimously, calling on the member states to recognize their national sign languages. Back then, only four states had done so. And as if to underline how little progress was being made, the EP passed another resolution. Ten years later, in 1998, but with almost the same demands. Recognize sign languages, professionalize sign language interpreting, encourage hearing people to learn sign language for more inclusion, to name just a few. And one of the MEPs was there for the whole time. His name is Richard Howitt. Thank you, Helga. I'm very proud to be here at this conference. Well done to you. And uh, as one of the longest serving members of the parliament, I was a co-signatory to the resolution in 1998 for the official recognition of sign language. And since then, 12 different European Union countries have done so. And I'm deeply proud of that and our role in that campaign, uh, most recently Malta. But Bulgaria and Luxembourg, come on, do it. Let's get all of you recognising sign language. In one month's time, I will finish in the European Parliament. I will stand down and not be a member of the European Parliament anymore. Uh, there won't be another session in this hemicycle, so this is the last time I will speak in this hemicycle. And I just want to remind you that when, before I was an MEP, the thing that made me want to be an MEP is that I ran a disability local project with European funding that got British and, De and Dutch deaf people together to learn about each other's sign language. That was the thing that got me into this chamber, and I'm very proud that today's event is the, one of the last things before I leave. In 2010, the European Union officially ratified the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. That UN convention was a follow-up to the decade of disabled persons from 1981 to 1992. The convention was drawn up with the active involvement of representatives of the disability community and then adopted by the General Assembly in 2006. It entered into force in 2008 when the 20th party had signed it. Currently, 166 countries and the European Union have signed the CRPD. That means that the EU institutions now legally have to provide accessibility and equality for disabled citizens. And that's the big objective. Full recognition of sign languages in every EU member state. 23 states have one national sign language, but four states have even two. Belgium, for example, has a Flemish and a French-Belgian sign language. Spain has a Spanish and a Catalan variety. And Finland and Estonia accommodate their Swedish or Russian linguistic minorities, respectively, with their own sign language. And one member state, Luxembourg, shares its sign language with Germany. And I could go on. For example, French and American sign language have quite a few commonalities. The story behind this is fascinating, so here it goes real quick in a nutshell. In the late 1700s, the famous Royal Institute of the Deaf was founded in Paris. It exists to this day to teach young deaf people. 
one of the Institute's teachers back in the day was Laurent Clerc. He was born hearing, but lost his hearing and sense of smell in a fire accident when he was one year old. He was taught at the Institute in Paris and was such a good student that he was asked to stay on as a teacher. Meanwhile, in 1815, an American called Thomas Hopkins Galloday had come to London and then to Paris to learn about teaching the deaf out of frustration that the deaf in America had no specialized teaching whatsoever. Apparently, Galloday and Clerk really hit it off. They sailed back to America together in 1816 and used the 52-day voyage to learn from each other. Clerc taught Galloday French Sign Language and Galloday taught Clerc English. So despite his firm intention to soon return to his native France, Clerc never did. He and Galloday founded the first school for the deaf in Hartford, Connecticut and brought deaf education to North America. They brought along a lot of French signs and shaped the development of ASL, American Sign Language. Now, to give another example back here from Europe, the Vlaamse Badental used in Flanders is closer to the Langue des Signes de Belgique francophone than it is to the Dutch sign language used across the border. And contrary to popular belief, there is not one universal sign language, but rather a huge variety of national sign language, as we have seen, each with their own grammar, syntax, and even dialects. In terms of community, we're talking about 1 million sign language users, 51 million hard of hearing people, and 6,500 sign language interpreters throughout the entire EU. Now, depending on the country, the ratio of interpreters and users of sign language can vary considerably between 8 to 1 and 2,500 to 1. It is obvious that things need to change. Now let's finish this special episode of Leng FM with an impassioned statement by Yanis Vardakastanis, the president of the European Disability Forum. The European Disability Forum has Linguistic diversity is a right that must be respected and upheld. The EP has adopted an implementation report on the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in July, prepared by Helga Stevens, that contains recommendations for the rights of the disabled. It is an opportunity for the EU to sign up to the UN efforts and to provide a legal framework for fighting against poverty, discrimination and human rights violations among people with disabilities. It is incumbent on the whole EU to implement the Parliament's recommendations. All those rights should be accessible to everyone unconditionally. Accessibility must become a reality for every European citizen. People with disabilities live in difficult times, times of austerity, discrimination and exclusion. The time has come for the EU to open up to people with disabilities, to say yes, the EU is there for Europeans with disabilities and for everyone else. The EU must bring about a day where you and us, regardless of disabilities, are able to communicate with each other on equal footing. In conclusion, nothing for us without us. This has been episode 28 of Lang FM, a podcast about languages and the people who live and work with them. More information about this episode and the back catalogue of earlier ones can be found online at www.langfm.audio. That's L-A-N-G-F-M dot audio. Special thanks go to Lauren Harris for live tweeting the conference and helping me with this episode. If you enjoyed listening, you can subscribe in iTunes or any other podcast app or simply share it with someone who you think should know about it. Thanks for listening and talk to you soon on Lang FM. Er zijn nog een aantal mensen aan het praten. Je lieve hen te onderbreken, maar dat is typisch dove cultuur. Wij zouden eigenlijk het licht eens moeten aan- en uitknipperen.